uh, the pros for us, flexibility. Um, we don't have to have the overhead of rent or large equipment or the liability insurance for the brick and mortar office, the fixed hours, the fixed locations that um, someone, if someone wants to work with us and they would potentially say, oh, you're too far away that, or I can't get there or whatever. Um, those are the pros that benefit us in terms of our ability to reach a lot of folks in the community in, in different locations. What about cons? Uh, the, the cons of the brick and mortar? No, of being mobile. Oh, the cons of mobile. Um, well, between patients, you know, yeah, you can do some documentation or notes, um, but it would be what Tony would probably call like basically like inefficient time um, mm -hmm. where you can't really, you know, produce uh, income, right? Um, unless you're doing some, you know, marketing something, marketing plan, you know, you're, you're editing your Facebook ads between patients or something, um, you know, in terms of marketing efforts. Uh, yes, there's a cap in terms of like, like my therapist, we do one-on-one -on -one visits and they're seeing like four to six patients a day versus Tony, um, you know, his therapist or any brick and mortar therapist can, can w like much easier see 10, 12, 15. Then obviously it depends on the business model past that. But like you could see arguably twice the amount of patients per day. That would be the biggest con in terms of, um, being efficient as a therapist, like under the compliance rule and all that. Yeah. All right. I'll give you my pros and cons for brick and mortar. And then Jimmy, you can give us the tiebreakers. Right. So, so like you said, I mean, pro from a brick and mortar clinic, like I've done mobile, I've been in that world for a little while, but I can have, I can have 20 people in my clinic. I can do single unit sessions. I have ultimate flexibility. I can not even bill for a person on a particular day if they show up and I'm like, you know what? Today is not a good day. Let's just take it easy. Let's just talk. I, 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 it's not taking me out of, you know, anything else. Um, I've got equity that I'm building if I own the facility, obviously, and, and I do own several buildings. Uh, there's just so much more that I could bring to my patient care experience, to my business, to my growth. The cons, like you said, I mean, there's always liability. I've got people in and out of my clinic. I've never had a slip and fall case, but it could certainly happen. There's issues with maintenance. I'm the one I'm going in later today because my water heater isn't working right. I need to figure out what's going on. I'm not a plumber, but I watched one on YouTube. Um, so, you know, we have the expense, we have the liability. If rates go up, my mortgage gets more expensive, all of these other things that are going on. But I think in reality, what it comes down to is your personality. What is it that you want? I have talked to mobile therapists and I'm genuinely shocked and blown away when they tell me this, but it's their prerogative. They're like, no, I love the 30 minute drive between patients. It gives me a chance to decompress. It gives me a chance to listen to music and relax and spend time in the car. That's something that they perceive as value add, where with me, it would be like nails on a chalk chalkboard. I would go crazy if I had to wait 30 minutes in a car. I would hire a driver just <laughs> to drive me around. I would buy one of those sprinter vans so that I could do documentation, record videos in the back if I was a mobile therapist. I would also make sure I had a small demographic, small geography that I was seeing everybody in the neighborhood. Um, I always think of mobile PT like the guys that mow the lawns. I would go to my first client and I would try to get six or seven clients in the same building on the same block, um, do everything I could to, to just pack it all in. But that's my personality. That's my mentality. I want, I want a clinic full of 20 people, even if I'm billing for one of them, because I want the community, I want the engagement, I want the, the fun and the, the energy of that. Yeah. So Jimmy, what do you think? Yeah, it depends, right? It's where I get to play it safe and be in the middle. Oh, you gotta pick one. Come on. <laughs> so cost. Well, I mean, it also depends on where you were. All right. Like, so like Dave's in New York City and Tony's in Ohio. And I worked, I used to work for Fox Rehabilitation. When people ask me what that was, I'm like, it's Uber for geriatric PT uh for grandma. It's like those individuals they were treating were never getting to a to a clinic. They were so deconditioned or they didn't have a ride. There were so many barriers. They were like, those people are never getting seen. That's a problem. That's also an opportunity. So they were like, let's find therapists who are not like Tony, who are like Dave to do those things. And they love those things, right? Then you can also get smart with AI and make sure, does the math math? Um, and also, you know, with what Tony's talking about, you can do, you have 
you have flexibility. People look at people look at brick and mortar with lacking of flexibility, but you can do a lot of different things um, in a location, as Tony's talking about group classes, or you know, you can do subscription models. If you're in New York City, I mean, how many times is there, uh, you know, a Wall Street guy in his building who's like, I'm not leaving this building because I make X amount of dollars, but I'll go downstairs to the gym, and you and I will do one on one. You you that person values that more. If you like doing that, you can get paid more for that to offset the cost of you driving or taking a subway or whatever from thing to thing. So I think it depends on what you like doing. Which would I like? Um, I I mean, how cool would it be to have a brick and mortar or partner with an anytime fitness and then be able to do both? Be like, yeah, man, I'm like the fire. I'm the fire department. You got a problem. You come right to the firehouse or I go out to you. I'll interject one more thing because we got to nail down. Jimmy's got to make a decision. <clears throat> The money I, the money that Tony spends, <clears throat> even though he owns his real estate, but if he didn't own the office, <clears throat> the money that he spends or that most brick and mortar practices spend on the lease agreement per year, wherever they are, right. I probably spend that on marketing. So arguably, which one's a better investment? Now, I know there's a lot of physical, there's a lot of patients that are Googling like physical therapy near me. And most people have it in their mind that they need to go to an office. So that goes against me. That actually benefits any brick and mortar practice owner. If you look at the even my Google, uh, Google My Business account, there'll be like X amount of people every month clicking the directions, like where, like the location and the directions to my, you know, PO boxes that I have, like my right. virtual mailbox that I have on Google Maps. Right. So that benefits Tony and every brick and mortar office. Right. However, my side, I want to argue whatever someone spends, like two grand a month or whatever their rent is. I'm definitely spending that or more on the marketing. So in terms of us being able to reach more people over so many more zip codes that a brick and mortar will usually service. And I'm spending that same or more that dollar amount on a, on a revenue generating thing, which is Google ads and new patient marketing, as opposed to the brick and mortar offices where they have to pay that right. for the rent and then allocate another dollar amount potentially for online marketing. Yeah. Now, I will say, I will say, because you guys know I don't do Google ads. I don't do Facebook ads. I do all direct to physician marketing. Um, and I don't even have to do that anymore. My brick and mortar building is a full time, 24 hours a day, seven day a week billboard that people are driving by. I do choose good locations, but people are driving by and seeing that constantly. I look at part of my rent as a marketing expense because I choose a location that's high traffic, high visibility. The other part that I always do, and I run the numbers for my, my people that take my Medicare billing courses, look, think about 15 minute commute time. And I think 15 minute commute time between sessions is reasonable. When you look at the amount of lost revenue between 15 minute commute time between each session on a five day a week basis, that more than exceeds anything you would spend on rent, utilities, other overhead operating expenses. I've honestly seen it be about the same from a cost perspective on what it costs to run a mobile business compared to what it costs to run a brick and mortar. Yes, it's true. You don't sign a three-year lease when you're doing mobile, but truthfully, not to offend, and I don't think I will, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody start a physical therapy business and go out of business. Huh. Um, even if they're not making as much money as they want, even if they pivot, going back to what we talked about earlier, they might start thinking, I want to do this and turn out doing that, but they've generally always been pretty successful. I mean, we're in a high demand, high need occupation. There's people who need our services. It'd be pretty funny, Dave, if you could run an ad or figure out how to do it, where if I clicked on directions, it was at their house. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how cool would that be? It's like, how do I get to, how do I get to where Dave treats? It's like, He's in the call is coming from within. <laughs> he's in the building. He's, in, he's he already is, here. He is in my building. Knock, knock, knock. Dave's at the door. Oh, I, I wish, I wish because on Google Maps, you click on, you know, you find some, you know, like total therapy solutions or concierge pain relief, whatever you click on it. And, and people just hit that. It's usually highlighted in blue with white font, like directions. So they click that and it's going to take the individual to the address of, of whatever pin the therapy practice. Yeah. So I want, I, I want I the, I want the where they are and where you are to be the same. Just yeah. They'll be Amazing. like, "What does that mean?" It's like, "We come to you, right?" Any hacker, any hacker, reach out to me. Let's see if we can do it right. legally. 
So I think, you know, and this is going to be like, it's pretty much whatever you like to do. But if I had to pick one, I think you can do, you could do mobile with a brick and mortar, but you couldn't do brick and mortar if you were just mobile. So Tony could be like Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm not in the office. I'm, I'm coming to you. You couldn't do that the other way. That's a good point. But there also are ways like, you know, people in New York City are like, uh, I don't have a clinic, but I'm going to come to your office. And there's a gym in every office building. And there's a pretty much a gym in every single, you know, residence or walk up, you know. Um, so I would say, um, I guess brick and mortar to start, but also, I don't know, but who the hell I run a podcast from my kitchen, uh, start a podcast, everybody. It's what everybody else is doing. I would say mobile to start with, yeah, if you have that desire, you move into brick and mortar, you know, it just, like Jimmy said, it depends on what you want, your personality type, what you yeah. hope to deliver. Um, Let's hit one more because yeah. I actually, I love these topics that strike a nerve and this one kind of struck a nerve. So I had been saying, you don't have 